Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel. That is the Chief IES. So friends, uh, again the repeated uh, introduction, uh, same introduction that I repeat often. Uh, welcome to our channel. So here on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have multiple series on our channel that target your problems as well as mains. So this video is about our series that cover your current affair MCQs, daily current affair MCQs in which what we do we daily discuss the 10 MCQs relating to the current affairs of the day. So today is 23 August so let's see what are the questions of today. The first question is Arbin Modi task force seen in news is related to a direct tax code, BGST reform, C defense related expenditure, D anti-corruption measures. So there is no point in saying that uh, A is the correct answer because it is surely the correct answer and it is visible to you on your uh, screen so uh, basically this task, fo task force force was set up in 2017 by our uh, prime minister uh, because of the purpose that uh, the income tax that uh, law that is there income tax act is, that is there is is, uh, is is of 1961 so a lot has changed since then and uh, uh, in this context uh, uh, the the government is feeling that there must be a, an updated direct tax law which must be in uh, uh, consonance or in uh, we can say uh, in resonance with the economic needs of the country so uh, the main head is Shri Arban Modi and there are also uh, others also that is Shri Girish Ajuja, Shri Rajiv Mamani. So you don't have to go in that detail. You can only remember, you must remember that only uh, uh, one person is uh, 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 important and that is Shri Arban Modi. And uh, basically this task force, do remember that this task force is to uh, frame a new direct tax, direct tax code for India. So let's move on to the next question. Next is uh, second question. Uh, here second question is about uh, NISTHA that is uh, uh, National Initiative for School Heads and Teachers Holistic Advancement. So as is clear from its name. So you will be able to uh, judge what will be the value of uh, uh, this uh, scheme and what, what this scheme will will be all about. So first is the scheme covers all schools and colleges present in the states. Second it is under Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. Friends, both of these statements are incorrect uh, because this national initiative for school heads and teachers holistic advancement is basically for the uh, sc uh, school uh, school heads as well as teachers that are there in the uh, uh, in the in the state in the state run government schools so basic purpose is to to enhance uh, their skills and in, uh, provide them training so that they can uh, uh, they can become aware of the uh, uh, the, uh, the various tools that can be employed to improve uh, improve improve learning outcomes so basic purpose is to ensure that they are skilled enough to uh, to educate children in a way that their learning outcome increase and they, in this way the the per, uh, the purpose is to uh, develop such type of modules which will help uh, teachers learn such skills uh, so answer would be D so it is not under also Ministry of Skill Development but it has been released by Ministry of Human Resources Development so HRD ministry is there so to build capacities of 40 42 lakh government teachers across the country so it is the world's largest teacher training program so as I have already provided told you that it is basically to equip teachers to encourage and foster critical thinking in students as well as uh, to develop standardized training modules which have which will be developed at national level for all states and UTs the and prominent features of these modules will be uh, kind of uh, making teachers familiar with the different uh, things like educational games and quizzes social emotional learning motivate motivational interactions team building preparation for school based assessment in build continuous feedback mechanism online monitoring and support system training need and impact analysis so basically uh, this uh, prominent feature is that uh, to equip teachers with all those tools which are necessary for educating uh, children and for improving the learning outcomes um, uh, in addition uh, uh, in with special reference to the special uh, the special children also so this is about uh, your uh, 
second question and your third question is consider the following statements related to uh, state rooftop so, uh, solar attractiveness index first maharashtra has been ranked first in the index uh, second is it has been released by ministry of new and renewable energy in collaboration with uh, ssef asocham and ebi so here let me tell you friends that first statement is incorrect because the state rooftop solar in attractiveness index was topped by karnataka and yes it has been developed by ministry of new and renewable energy in collaboration with these uh, or uh, uh, we can say associations or organizations so answer is second only so karnataka is the uh, state that has been ranked first so basically this uh, this st uh, state rooftop uh, rooftop solar attractiveness index is basically to assess the uh, attractiveness of a particular state to the uh, the roof to uh, state roof uh, this uh, rooftop uh, solar deployment uh, so basically current uh, currently the uh, government of india is promoting solar energy and also so friends we have a target of 175 gigawatt of installed capacity in new and renewable energy sources so out of which 100 gigawatt target is of your uh, solar energy so uh, uh, an essential part of promoting uh, and uh, uh, installing more uh, solar uh, solar capacity is focusing upon the solar uh, rooftops uh, where the solar uh, so solar panels are installed on the rooftops of commercial buildings or residential buildings so this can play an important role so that's why this uh, index has been launched so that the different states can assess the steps taken by them and the uh, 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 loopholes that are there and so that they can uh, 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 accordingly evolve the policy and uh, their implementation framework so that uh, their outcome could be improved so the solution is b so as i told you basically to provide comprehensive review uh, of the state level measures that were that are adopted to facilitate rooftop solar develop uh, deployment and it, it basically covers five key aspects that is robustness of policy framework implementation environment investment climate uh, and consumer experience business ecosystem so significance is basically encourages each state to to uh, to look that what it has done and what it can do more to improve its solar rooftop rooftop ecosystem so karnataka has been placed at the first rank and telangana Go uh, gujarat andhra uh, they have been ranked at second third and fourth respectively so uh, this is all about your uh, uh, further discussion as i've told you so as of now we have just uh, uh, as of when when audited in 2016 we found that only 12 uh, 1247 megawatt of solar rooftop capacity has been installed but we have a potential of 124 gigawatt so you can see the potential of uh, rooftop solar so we have target of uh, uh, 100 gigawatt of solar energy uh, inst uh, capacity installation uh, by 2022 so 100 gigawatt but rooftop solar alone offers that uh, uh, the alone offers uh, the the potential of 124 gigawatt so obviously 40 percent of the target that has been set uh, that is 100 gigawatt so 40 gigawatt will, will obviously be met by rooftop uh, solar pan uh, installation of roo rooftop solar panels but uh, the potential is there and we are uh, not ha harnessing it to the optimal level and then is uh, consider the following statements related to international court of justice first it is part of united nation all the members of the un general assembly comes under the jurisdiction of icj uh, second proceedings in the icj cannot begin until the country against whom the application has been made consents to the icj jurisdiction over the matter so which of the following is true so both of these statements are uh, correct friends because yes it is a specialized residency dealing with uh, your uh, principal judicial body of the united nation and uh, it was established in 1946 and it is basically headquartered in uh, geneva so members sorry not geneva i think it is in uh, i'm not able to uh, i uh, international court of justice is in i think hague uh, so I'm not able to properly remember recall you can comment you can comment in the comment box so that so that you can uh, other students can also know so members are basically 15 judges they are uh, elected for nine year term and they are elected by absolute majority in the UN General Assembly and UNSC in both uh, they both votes but separately and uh, the pers uh, person is appointed for nine year and uh, every uh, uh, every third year uh, one third of the members retire so that the continuity remains there so this is uh, more detail so you can read about it 
um, uh, there will be no point wasting time here in the uh, video itself because time is not uh, enough uh, uh, that so that we can discuss each and every point fifth question is consider the following statements related to age of marriage in the context of india first currently the law prescribes that minimum age of marriage is 21 and 18 years for men and women respectively second child marriages are not illegal but no can be declared void at the request of the minor in the marriage so which of the above statement is correct so all of these statements, both these statements are correct, both 1 and 2. Uh, so minimum age of marriage uh, is 21 for uh, male and males and 18 for women. So answer is C. So uh, uh, petition says uh, uh, the, uh, recently the Delhi High Court has uh, issued a notice, notice to the Central Law Commission to respond to a petition filed which says that the, uh, the legal age of marriage must be equal for men as well as women because uh, it says that it discriminates uh, and uh, it violates Article 24. 14 and 21 of the constitution and also in fact uh, uh, the, the women right, uh, rights activists say that uh, uh, the uh, this is a stereotype that women uh, women uh, are uh, become mature at at uh, in small uh, uh, when they are younger and uh, then they uh, then then their counterparts male uh, uh, of, of the same age so that's why their marriage has age has been kept low so that is a stereotype which creates burden on the women uh, uh, younger women uh, and also it encourages uh, the stereotype that women must be uh, the the uh, the uh, woman must be uh, younger than the male uh, in marriage so it is a stereotype because uh, basically in marriage marriage is a type of contract or partnership and in, in which uh, nobody uh, is uh, is inferior and superior so when when they no, nobody is a senior or uh, 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 inferior or superior then why this different age so that is the thing so discussed here so uh, different things have been included here so you can read in the PDF itself when we the PDF will be provided next is six question is consider the following statements related to convention on international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna so sites is a basically convention about which we have to consider the following statements first it is an international agreement to regulate worldwide commercial trade in wild animals and plant species second it is administered by United Nation development program so first of, of uh, which of the uh, following statements is correct so first statement is correct but second is not correct because it is basically administered by United Nation Environment Program. So sites is basically uh, treaty uh, A. It is legally bound, binding on its members who those who have joined it and it is uh, it must uh, it, it uh, mandates that the uh, member states who have joined this uh, they must uh, come up with domestic uh, law to implement it. So basically it uh, regulates the international trade in uh, endangered uh, uh, wild animal and plant species. So it was signed on March 3, 1973. So that's why it is uh, uh, the World Wildlife Day celebrated on 3 March. So it is administered by United Nations Environment Program and its secretariat is in Geneva. So it is legally binding on the uh, uh, on the uh, on the state parties that have joined to it. So it uh, it classifies uh, 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 species into three appendix. That is appendix one, two, and three. So appendix one um, in appendix one are those uh, species that are uh, in on the verge of extinction that they fa that face the danger of extinction. So trade uh, in them and in their items is completely prohibited, uh, except uh, except in extraordinary uh, situations. For example, scientific or educational reasons. And appendix two, uh, they are basically species that are not uh, endangered, but uh, but they are that are not uh, uh, facing the threat of extinction. But it it is estimated that if their uh, trade happens, then a significant decline in their numbers can happen. So trade is regulated in this case by permit. So only those persons who have the permit can uh, can uh, can uh, can carry trade operations in these uh, in in these species and their items. So appendix three is basically for species uh, that that are uh, protected in at least one country uh, that is party to sites and has petitioned with other uh, petitioned others for help in controlling international trade in that species. Next is uh, seventh question. Seventh is Bevin Award recently seen in news is related to. Uh, a combating wildlife crime, B biotic innovation, C philanthropy, D child welfare. So let me tell you friends that the A answer is correct. So basically Bevin Award was recently given to conservationist Vivek Menon. Uh, so it is basically given uh, to uh, instituted by Animal Welfare Institute and, uh, and it is instituted for those uh, officers or we can say any other person or organization that prevents the wildlife crime and controls the and they combat the wildlife crime, uh, crime. So eighth question is which state government has recently allowed vehicle drivers in public sector undertakings A Tamil Nadu, B Kerala, C Karnataka, D Punjab. 
so friends the answer here is kerala so kerala has recently allowed that women can women uh, women can be drivers in the public sector or government uh, 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 vehicles so the uh, proposal is there to frame a new law for this next is ninth question consider the following related to traffic first it is a part of united nation organization second it deals with road safety and death suffering in road accidents so which of the statements is correct so one two both one and two no, neither one nor two so friends let me tell you that both are incorrect so it is basically uh, traffic is an ngo uh, that uh, that that has that uh, that that works for uh, for conservation so it has recently come up with the data that uh, uh, the, uh, with the with the with the with the trade that is there in uh, illegal trade that is there in uh, uh, tigers so it is an ngo con uh, in working in conservation and currently it is in partnership with world world wildlife fund for nature as well as international Con uh, union for conservation of nature so key findings are that uh, 2359 tigers were seized from 2000 to 2018 so top three countries with the, with the such seizures are india china and indonesia and uh, more details are here then is 10th uh, question consider the following pairs c and the bordering areas aral sea uzbekistan black sea serbia Th third is caspian sea kazakhstan fourth mediterranean sea egypt red sea syria so friends uh, fourth is clearly correct uh, mediterranean sea is uh, 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 they are uh, surrounded by egypt uh, so here also aral sea is also correct uzbekistan and perhaps uh, this uh, um, I think uh, th third Caspian Sea must must also be correct. And I think answer should be B. Yeah, answer is B. One, three, and four. So here uh, uh, you can see the diagram. So Black Sea is surrounded by different countries. So you can uh, pause the video and can see in detail. So this is uh, this uh, uh, that area of Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and uh, this is Mediterranean Sea. You can see here. So this is friends uh, all about today about today's discussion of, of current affair MCQs and if you like this discussion if you like the MCQs then do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and do ensure that you tell us your feedback in comments and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel and lastly friends if you want to get the PDF of these MCQs then you can check the description box the link is there you have to uh, actually we have kept the uh, PDF uh, uh, at, a, at a minimum subscription. Uh, uh, that is subscription amount is 99 rupees per month so that has been kept for the purpose of our motivation as well as for the purpose of your affordability so in case you are interested to join uh, the pdf uh, if, if, if you want to subscribe the pdfs of these discussions you can uh, 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 you can join uh, by using the link that will be there in description box and you can also contact us at chys21 at the rate gmail.com or this number 8968920720 for any queries and lastly friends we have a website on which you can can visit on which we daily upload articles of uh, current affair relevance and also we have a telegram channel that is the link of which is shown in your screen and will also be provided in the description box so in this telegram channel we regularly post updates so if in case you are interested to remain in touch with us then you are most welcome to join our telegram channel or can visit our website so this is all about today's video thank you have a very nice day ahead